Cool. What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're continuing our series on learning SketchUp in 30 days by creating an isometric diagram. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we can use an isometric diagram to basically indicate the way a space is going to come together. And to set this up, what I've done is I've started by just creating a floor, and then I've created like my stair and elevator core walls right here. So we're gonna act like this is like a high rise or something like that. And so what I wanna do is I wanna give this some thickness, right? So I wanna push pull it up like this, but I don't really like the result that this gives me because the exterior skin isn't very good. So. What I might do instead is I might go ahead and draw this up just to use this kind of a guide, but then I'm going to draw in my curtain wall panel. So I'm gonna draw a 10 foot line right here and I'm gonna split this face up and then I'm gonna offset it in by two inches, right? And basically what I'm doing is I'm roughing out a piece of glass right here. Well then I can come in here and I can actually erase all of this out using the eraser tool. So tap the E key like this and so now what I can do is I can use these as repeating pieces of glass, right? So I'm just gonna push pull this. Uh, we'll say that they're gonna go out right here um, to whatever the depth of those mullions might be. So maybe like two inches or something like that. These might be a little bit different in commercial applications, but we're gonna call it good for what we're doing right now. Well, now what I can do is I can take this whole thing, I can make it a component, and we're just gonna call this glass. And then I'm just gonna use the array tool. So I'm gonna use the move tool. I'm gonna tap the control key and I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna type in times and a value of 10 or times 12 or maybe times 14 like this. So what I'm doing is I'm basically creating one piece of geometry in here, which I can apply a material to. So like a piece of glass or something like that, just like this. Well, then I can take this whole thing. I can make a copy on this corner and again, we're just gonna use the array functionality that we've been talking about for basically this entire series. All right, so then I'm just gonna take the floor, I'm gonna put it in a group, I'm gonna take all of my glazing, and I'm gonna deselect these by doing a shift click. I'm gonna put that in a group right here. And so this basically makes up one level, right? And then you could take this whole thing and you could group it. You could also make it a component depending on if your levels are going to be different or not. In this case, I'm going to make my levels a little bit different. So I'm just going to move this up. And one thing that you might want to consider before you do that is you may want to model your floor so that it actually has some thickness, um, kind of like a real world thickness associated with it. For this diagram, I'm not going to worry too much about that for right now. We're not going to worry too much about structure heights because I really want you to learn how to create the diagram, uh, not anything else. So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode right here. I'm going to create a copy up here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this version so that my windows are where I want them to be. So in this case, for example, I want this floor to be a little bit different, right? I want it set up where down below you may have like a little patio or something like that. For this one, I don't necessarily want that. So I'm just going to make the adjustment right here. We'll extend our floor like this. And then say we wanted another floor that was also going to be different. You can make a copy right here and just make that adjustment as well. All right. So now we've got three different levels in here and there's a couple ways you could approach this at this point, depending on what you're using your overall model for. Um, because I, what I want is I want to create a view where all three of these are kind of separate um, so that we can actually see inside of all of them, right? So there's a few ways you could do this. You could, once you get it modeled, create a new copy of the model. You could also create a copy over here and make the changes like this, or you can just move your original around. I'm not always a massive fan of moving the original around because a lot of the time um, you're actually gonna wanna use that for something. So kind of up to you what you do here. In this case, we're just gonna move this manually inside of our scene. But what I wanna do is I wanna move this so that each one of these is separate from the other one, right? 
So I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna set it up like this. And what I wanna do is I wanna take my camera view and I wanna change it from perspective to isometric because isometric is gonna give us a better view of what's going on in here. So the way that you can do that is you can go into your scene settings right here and there's a little option in here for perspective or for parallel projection. In um, the desktop version, you just go up to view parallel projection, I believe. But we're gonna click on this right here. Well, notice when we do that, all of a sudden this whole thing fits better in our scene than it did before, right? And that's because we don't have perspective driving this to go off to a vanishing point. Instead, what we have is we have the perspective lines running parallel like this. And so what we've got is we've got this perspective diagram in here, or we've got this diagram view. Now there's a few other changes I would make to this. So, um, and some of them are gonna have to do with your styles. So what I wanna do is I wanna go up into my styles right here. And remember that right now, we're running the architectural design style, but we wanna edit and create our own. So what you can do is you can just come in here and you can edit this particular style and it'll create a new copy of this style. So I'm just gonna click on this right here and we're just gonna call this isometric view. And so remember that what the styles do is they set things like how the materials look and how the edges look inside of SketchUp. Well, in this case, I'm gonna click on the edit button and I wanna start by going into my modeling settings and I wanna turn my model axes off right, because I don't want those in my scene. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle my background so that we only have a background. So we're gonna turn sky off, and then we're also going to set our background version to white, like this. So I'm just gonna click and drag this over here. That gives us a white view instead of a gray in the background, like this. So now we've got this view, and the way this diagram works, it's a little too detailed for me, right? And so what that means is that means that I don't even want the colors in here. I want this to be black and white. So what you can do is you can go into your face settings and instead of setting this to shaded textures, we're gonna go down or we're gonna set this to monochrome right here or actually not even monochrome, we wanna set this to hidden line. And so when we set this to hidden line, what this does is this takes this whole thing and it basically sets it so that there's no texture shown. You can see the faces in here, right, if you select them, but you can't actually see any of the colors. And the nice thing about this is it still maintains your transparency, so you can still see through these windows right here. And you can toggle material transparency on and off using this little checkbox right here. I'm going to leave this on. All right, and so now we're going to click on done in order to save those changes to our isometric view. And so one thing I don't like about this is it still looks really flat. And so one thing we can do to change that is we can go into our shadows right here and we can adjust the shadows in our scene like this. And so we do have a problem which we're going to fix in a second. So notice how when we set up our shadows, like this, we start getting shadows in our scene right here. But the issue is you've got this big clunky shadow right here, and the reason why is because we've modeled this at ground level, right? And so what this is trying to do is this is trying to cast a shadow on the ground, um, even though we don't really want the ground in this situation. So we can fix that just by taking all of these and moving them up. And so notice how when we move them up like this, and I'm gonna move them up high enough that they're no longer in my scene here, but we're just gonna adjust our view like this. Well, now we've got this isometric view in here and it's got shadows going into the scene as well. So we've got shadows on. Now we've made a lot of changes in here. One thing I wanna do is I wanna click over into my scenes and I wanna click the plus button to save this because I wanna make sure that I can get back to this if I ever accidentally like rotate out of it or anything like that. So when we save this, we can click on it to go back into our scene. All right, so one other thing really quick, and we'll leave this saved as is. So we're just gonna leave this scene saved with this style, but then let's go ahead and let's create a new style. So we're gonna go into our styles right here. We're gonna click the plus button and we're gonna use that isometric view as a base. But in this case, we're gonna do isometric view color. So we're gonna create a new style. And for this one, we wanna switch this to shaded, right? I'm gonna go ahead and click on done. And so basically what that's done is that's saved an isometric view, black and white, and then an isometric view, 
color. Well, with the isometric view color, what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to replace this blue material with a gray material um, because I still want this to look pretty monochrome, right? We're going to do a gray on one side, gray on the other side, call it good. And then we'll go back to this view right here. And I'm actually going to create a new view and I'm going to apply that color to it. So we're going to go into our style settings and we're going to apply the isometric view color to it. And then we're going to go ahead and update this scene. And we'll go ahead and update all of the properties and click on OK like this. So now we've got something very similar, but it's got kind of a gray in here. Well, what this allows me to do is this allows me to bring in some people models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the 3D warehouse and I'm going to find some 2D silhouettes. And we'll just click into models right here instead of products. And that should give us a bunch of options. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go to popularity. And so notice how there's a number of these contained in the SketchUp material library or, or uh, the SketchUp 3D warehouse. So we're going to bring a couple of these in and we're just going to add them to our scene. So we don't need a ton of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make copies of them around my scene. We're going to be far enough away that you can't tell that I'm reusing the same models over and over again. So I'm just going to add some of these people models in here. One thing I might do is I might change them so that instead of a dark material, they have a light material. So maybe like a bright red or something like that. So I'm just going to apply a red material to these people models so that they stand out a little bit more. And what this is going to do is this is going to give us kind of a sense of scale. And again, remember that you can use the move tool in copy mode and just use somewhere on the ground plane as a reference in order to make copies of these really quickly. And we'll just go back to our second scene right here. And so what that does is that gives us a diagram with some color inside of it. And then there's a few different things you could do with this. You could send this to a photo editing software, or if you wanted to add some like dotted lines to indicate some things, other things like that, you could use the tape measure tool in order to do that. So you could use different points like this, but you can use those guides in order to add additional detail or other things like that. So I'll link to the next video in this series on this page as soon as it's ready to go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.